We're going to start simple with a review of what a solution to an equation is, what an equation is, um, and how can we determine if a value is a solution to an equation. So I want you to keep in mind that an equation is a math sentence that has an equals. A solution makes an equation true. Okay, so if we have this first example, if you multiply me by 3, so remember that we're talking about some specific number, maybe x for the variable, and increase that by 5, we can write the equation of 20. We learned last year, you can guess and check, you can use your algebraic method to actually solve this. And you should come up with that number is 5, where 5 is a solution. Because if we plug it back in to our original equation, we will see that both sides are equal, a.k.a. 5 makes the equation true. So let's try another one. And now this question is not asking you what is the solution? It's saying, will this work? Will this be a solution? So I'm going to do my work. You have space in your margin. I'm going to do it over here. 2 plus 4 parentheses. Now they're saying x equals 6. So in place of x, I'm going to put the 6 equals 22. Order of operations, parentheses first. 2 plus 4 times 5. Multiply. 2 plus 20. 22 equals 22, so we're going to say yes, this is a solution. What I would like you to try is letter B, and then tell me yes or no is 24 a solution. Now that you've answered that question, no way, or I'm sorry, one way to solve an equation containing a variable is to use the algebraic method. That is this method that we use right here. The method that I, those steps I had written on the board all last year. Um, and we're going to review those. On this next page, what we have is an example. Now, they wrote their example a little bit different than we do. So we're going to talk about um, reviewing of the properties, which we have right here and how we can solve these equations. So if we have 3x plus 90 equals 2x, or plus 2x equals 360, we're going to talk about this algebraic method. So what you can see that they've done here is they've gone ahead and rewritten so that our like terms, you should recognize that word, are next to each other, and we can put those together. So if you recall the steps on the board last year, step one was always to distribute, which we did in the previous example. Step two was always to collect like terms, which they've done here, 3x plus 2x is 5x. So now they're going to, there's a step in between that we're not gonna see here, um, where we're gonna move our variables to one side. These will end up back on the board by the end of the week. So this is step four. So they've undo, they're going to undo the add, subtract. And then they're going to undo the multiply, divide, which is what you can see right there. Now, so they got 54. So if you look at the try these, we did the algebraic method previously. Remember, the key property on all of this is going to be the distributive. And we'll just look at one of these, and then I'm going to have you do one. So let, we're going to do letter C together. Letter C says 12D. I'm going to go ahead and move my minus 3D next to it so my like terms are together. If you can do this without moving them next to each other, that's fine. I just want you to visually see what's happening. So this is 90 plus 2. So we had no distributive property. We collected like terms. We do not have variables on both sides. So we're going to undo our add, subtract. And 
then we're going to undo our multiply divide. This is not three, ladies and gentlemen. This is one third. And if I plugged one third in to the D here and the D here and I solved, I should get five on both sides. Now, I would like you to try letter G. On this last page, now we're going to combine what we've done in the past, which is where we look at a word problem, and we go ahead and we write our equation from the word problem, and then we solve it. So Julio has five more dollars than Dan. Now, if you recall, when we've talked about this in the past, we talked about diagramming our sentences. So if Julio has five more than Dan has the form of equals. So we can say that Julio equals Dan plus five. All together, so that now we're adding them together. Julio and Dan have 19, and have is a form of equals. So we can say Julio plus Dan equals 19. Now they're, they're, but if we keep looking, how much money does each person have? We're using D to represent Dan, and we're going to write a single expression. Hmm, well, let's think about this. Well, I know that Julio and Dan is 19. Is there a way we can represent Julio with this D? Well, yeah, we can right here. So we're going to replace, we're going to substitute the J for Julio with D plus 5. So I can say D plus 5, remember that's Julio, plus D for Dan equals 19. This is my, ex my equation. Okay, because we've already, I kind of combined these with, our expression first one was here. So now can we solve this? Well, D plus 5 plus D is 19. Remember, there are invisible ones in front of these Ds. So D plus D is 2D plus 5 is 19. Undo the add subtract. Undo the multiply divide. Dan has seven dollars. But did we answer the question? Well, no, because the question says, how much does each one have? Well, if Dan has seven, and we know coming back here that Julio is Dan plus five, so Julio has 12. So what does this mean? This means Dan. We're going to write a sentence. Dan has $7, and Julio has $12. Is this reasonable? Well, can we plug it back in? Can we plug that 7 in for D? 7 plus 5 plus 7, is that 19? Well, it most certainly is. So does it check out for reasonableness? It absolutely does. Those are our notes for tonight. Tomorrow when you come to class, we'll answer any questions you have, and then we'll go from there. Have a good night.